Oh my. Well, good evening, Pray and Share Warriors. I was laughing at my cat. She just cracks me up. She's right next to me in a chair. She, <laughs> her eyes are so big because she's so happy. Because <laughs> I've been moving the chairs around. Okay, well, I hope you had an awesome day today. An awesome Sunday. I had an awesome Sunday. I don't know. I guess I'm going to do this like this. <laughs> she gets getting mad at me the more I disturb her. She's <laughs> she's giving me. Don't be, don't give me looks. Be a nice kitty cat. Anyway, she's giving me a dirty look right now. Because <laughs> she's kind of mad anyway because I turned the light on. And I shut the door. So she's not real happy about that. So let me get my music set up. You'd think I gave myself extra time that I could uh, get here on time. But I'm only a minute late. Okay, so what I want to talk to you tonight about... Mm, kitty, I need to be closer. Uh-oh, what did I run into? Ran into my ex my new exercise bike. Uh, <clears throat> what I want to talk to you about tonight is I speak Jesus and all all the things that Jesus does. I love this new song, I Speak Jesus. I just heard it this morning and I'm so impacted by it, I want to learn it and sing it. It is such an awesome song. It has such awesome lyrics. <clears throat> So let's jump into some prayer. So good. All right. That's water. God, we just thank you. God, we thank you that we can speak the name of Jesus and that Jesus is always there for us. He never leaves us and he never forsakes us. He gave us that promise and he keeps it. God, we just thank you for sending Jesus to die for us when we did not deserve the sacrifice that he had to make. But God, because of your tremendous love, you did send him to die for us. And God, I will share tonight some times that I just know, I know that uh, Jesus intervened for me. I will share that tonight, God. <clears throat> God, we just thank you because you are on your throne and you are in control. And you are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. You are our shelter. You are our refuge. And you are our strength, God. God, you are the righteous judge. You will judge all unrighteousness, God. But you are kind and loving and compassionate and forgiving, God. You are so patient, God, with us. You want none to perish, God. And that is why Jesus has not returned to get us yet. Because you want everyone to have the opportunity to choose your Son as their Savior, God. And to escape the wrath to come. So, God, we just pray for the lost, God. We pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. Yeah. God, we just pray for that you would soften their hearts. We pray for the prodigals to see where they are, to return to the relationship with you, to repent, God, to have you reconcile their relationship and make it just as new as it was at the beginning. God, we just pray for peace. We pray for a peace that comes through Jesus and compassion. We pray for mutual respect for each other. We pray for the love that comes through Jesus for everyone, God. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I am listening to this song right now, and I got to... It is so impacting. 
even while I'm sitting here listening to it, I'm just like, I'm blown away by the lyrics of this song. So I wrote just a little bit this afternoon about it. It's been a busy day. I uh, had to get out of my house earlier today, so I didn't even meet with God until this afternoon. I had my quiet time this afternoon instead of this morning. It was kind of weird, but you know, God will meet us any time of the day. It doesn't have to be in the morning. He is always available, always available. So this is what I wrote. I heard this song and message for the first time this morning. I love the lyrics. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. These lyrics are so powerful, just like the powerful name of Jesus. There is no name above the name of Jesus. There is no other name that can heal, break chains of addiction and sin. There is no other name that saves. I am following Jesus to heaven. Only he knows the way. I'm going to get me a t-shirt like that. That is a t-shirt slogan that I want to do. Um, I probably need to write it down before I forget it because... I tend to do that. Okay, uh, is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. I'm sorry, my nose itches. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so I just want to read you these lyrics because they are so powerful. And I may not read all of them to you. Oh, I apologize. My nose is itching. Is it your fault, Gracie? Is it? She's fixing to slap me. She's fixing to slap me. She goes, I knew I didn't want to do this show with you. I'll show you her in a little bit. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Because your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. And this is the bridge. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name Jesus. And again, shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. And Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name Jesus. And I think that's all. It's just more repeating. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. But these lyrics impacted me so much today. I heard this this morning and I remembered to write down... I mean to write, to share on Facebook. But right now, I am going to write this t-shirt idea down before I forget. This is how I work. I have to do things while I'm remembering. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. So once I've written that down, maybe I'll remember it. Okay. Well, let's look up some scripture. You want to see my cat? She's so cute. Let me show you my cat. Well, 
Facebook will get to see my cat. Hey, Gracie. Gracie Grace. Gracie Grace. <laughs> this is hard to do. There she is. Hey, Gracie Grace. Yeah, she is so precious. I rescued her. cat that Jesus showed me in a prayer. Let me see if I can like show uh, YouTube people too. There's Gracie Grace. Hey Gracie Grace. She's so annoyed. She goes, no wonder I don't ever want to come to your shows. She goes, you are annoying. <laughs> You're an annoying cat mom. Oh, here comes my other child. Oh, my. Seth. Oh, she's out of here. She goes, I'm out of here. <laughs> Do you want to be my next guest star? He wants me to put something on the TV for him. All right. Well, I'm going to go do that, and I will be right back. And I'm so sorry uh, for the interruption. I put, like, a show on for him. But apparently it's not what he wants to watch. So I'll be right back and we will jump into some scripture and we will jump into a salvation offer. I hope I didn't rent my bike. No, apparently not. Okay. Okay, so sorry. I lost my co-host, my cat. She ran out when when Seth came in. She ran out. Okay, well, that's good. She's kind of a distraction. She's so cute. Okay. So, let's see if we can find scriptures to go with this. Okay, so let's go to John. I think I like this other chair. I think it sits better. I need to put my exercise thing sideways, though. It's in the way. John chapter 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am, well, let's read the rest. And I know it seems like we just keep reading this same part over and over again. I really like all of John 14. Okay, well, we'll read John 14, 1 through maybe 12 or whenever I quit. Okay, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So if you belong to Jesus and he has gone to prepare a place for you, then he's going to come back and get you. I'm sorry, I messed up my computer. <laughs> Put it in the same place. This is so fun. Okay. I think it's Monday or something. Okay. So Jesus will come back and get us. He, he is either going to come back and get us when we are dying, or he's going to come back and get us with the rapture. 
I prefer the rapture myself. I want to fly. I want to I want to see what it looks like to see Jesus on the clouds. I think that will be the most spectacular thing to see that anyone has ever seen. Okay. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known the Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. And Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and ye hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So Jesus is with the Father. Jesus is in heaven with the Father. And he is preparing a place for us. And he has been there since the ascension. Physically and spiritually, Jesus lives in our hearts. If we're saved, we have Jesus in our hearts. Okay. So let's look up. Oh, I didn't number any of these today. Okay, Proverbs eight thirty five through thirty six. Let's look at it. I don't know why that is in Proverbs. It needs to be in Isaiah. Proverbs eight thirty five through thirty six. Okay, blessed is the man, I'm reading it 34. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. So sin is death. Sin separates us from God, and sin is death. But whoever finds Jesus finds life. Jesus is life, and when we find Jesus and we find life, we find favor with God. Okay, let's read John 1, 14. It is really good, too. So let me encourage you not only just to listen to what I say about the song, but to go and listen to it also and see what you think. You might not even like it. I was very, I was spiritually impacted by it today. Okay, John 1, it says 14, but I think I'm going to read 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so the John that they're talking about is John the Baptist. I mean, is, yeah, is John the Baptist. He was the precursor of Jesus. He came before Jesus and started sharing truth. And, but then Jesus came. Jesus is the true light. And through Jesus, whoever received Jesus was given power to become the sons of God. So that is really good. And that kind of touches on um, shine through the shadows your power your name is healing I don't know whether I have one that is about healing let's read um, let's read Isaiah 53.5 just feel like I'm flipping back and forth in the Bible. Isaiah 53, 5. There are two pages. And there's just one tonight. Isaiah 53, 5. I think we read it the other day, too. Um, let's start with 1. Let's start with 53.1. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire of him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, as we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Well, there's healed. He's our healer. He healed us by dying for us. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare, declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. 
He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So he was talking about Jesus. He was talking about Jesus. Okay, I was, re I, was <laughs> I was reading to see if Isaiah wrote this. They say that some of it seems like it wasn't written by him, but Isaiah was a prophet. And there's, there's much of Isaiah's prophecy that is coming true right now. Um, Latter-day prophecy that's coming true. Okay, well, I think that's all the verses that I want to read. Like I said, I'm trying to keep my time down. Uh, I'm trying to train myself to be more um, concise in what I say. Because I am a rambler. I can ramble on and on and on. But I do want to share some testimony with you tonight about um, Jesus showing up in my life um, so many times. Just so many times. I just want to share a few of those times with you. Okay, good afternoon, God. Good afternoon, child. I brought you a new day, child, of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities share my truths to share my truths in the gospel of jesus a new beautiful day child to worship with church family and to learn more about my word too and i said thank you for a new day of mercies and blessings god new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of jesus thank you for a beautiful day to worship and learn more about your word with my church family Thank you for all of my blessings, and please keep them safe. And he said, Child, the name of Jesus is so powerful. I sent you this song to share. I wanted you to be impacted by it so you could share a message about it. Child, so many people need to be set free through salvation in Jesus. He is the only way. He is the only one that can set them free, child. My truths and the gospel of Jesus are most important to anything. Child, so many people are hurting and need a touch of Jesus. Share what Jesus means to you and the difference he has made in your life. And I said, okay, God, I will do that. I will share when I got saved and how Jesus transformed my life, cleaned me up and pulled me out of the miry clay, um, how I was a whosoever, and I was the prodigal too. I will share how my quiet time has helped me grow closer to you, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I said, thank you for meeting with me later today. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug. I love you too, my child. Now go share what I need you to share. The reunion child is so soon, but I need my children to keep working until that moment. All is beautifully perfect here, child, so be ready. And I said, Maranatha, God. Okay, so one thing I do every year, I learned this from watching Elevation Church and Pastor uh, Stephen Furtick is I pick some words that I want to focus on for that year. And so this year, my focus is presence, testify, and encourage. 
And so those are the three things that I'm supposed to be working on. I want to be more in the presence of God this year. I want to testify to all the goodness that he has done. And I want to encourage others. So those are the three words that I chose. Last year they were something else. The year before they were something else. And it seems like when I choose these words that I'm walking through something so I can use these words the next year. I know that that sounds really weird, but anyway. So I'm trying to be more um, cognizant of sharing my testimony and just being more personal this year. Last year, I was, last year was such a weird year. It was just such a weird year. I'll probably go back and watch some of my videos from last year and laugh a little bit. Or, or laugh this year because I'm not that great. Anyway, but I am willing. I'm a willing vessel. And sometimes that's all God wants is a willing vessel. Somebody that will go, yes, okay, I will do that. Um, I don't feel equipped. I don't feel um, worthy. But yes, I will do that because he will equip you and he will give you what you need. Okay, so when I got saved, I was 31. I was not a little kid like a lot of people. A lot of people were kids when they were saved. But I already had the basis of knowing who Jesus was because I grew up in a family where my mother made sure that we went to church. Every time the doors were open, we were at church. So I knew, I knew up here who Jesus was, but I didn't know in here who Jesus was because Jesus, I did not have a personal relationship with Jesus like I do now. And so as an adult, I went through a really hard time when I was 31 and it just turned my world upside down. And everything that I knew changed and so in my brokenness I was seeking love and so when I walked into the church that I still go to now I felt love I felt compassion I was going through a divorce you know, people do not usually have open arms for people that are going through something like that because that's, that's against God's Word. And I was going through a divorce, and I was broken. My heart was broken. I felt like a failure. I felt like nobody is ever going to want me again because I failed. I have failed and so I felt love I felt acceptance at the church and so I got very involved in the church and in the people in the church but I hadn't asked Jesus into my heart yet so on about May, <laughs> wow, I just had this, like, Friday before last, <laughs> on May the 14th, and that was my spiritual birthday. That was the day that I asked Jesus into my heart. I was, we were at a revival, and I just felt moved by the Holy Spirit. I just knew that that's what I needed to do. I had never felt that before in my whole entire life. And I had been going to church all my life. And I didn't go to church at all when I was at college because I just didn't go. But as a young married woman, I did go because I knew that's where I was supposed to be. But I changed religions because of what I was going through. And like I said, I felt love, acceptance, and I found Jesus there. I found Jesus. Jesus came into my heart. 
And Jesus changed things in my heart that were wrong. And um, I didn't change overnight. I learned more and more about Jesus. The more I went to church, the more I invested my time in listening to Christian music instead of listening to country and rock. The more I listened to those lyrics, the more they um, got into my heart. And I don't know if you listen to Christian music, but a lot of it is scripture. And um, I read books. I read Christian books. I read the Bible. I taught a Sunday school class for singles. I, I was busy once I got saved. I was busy for the Lord. I was serving the Lord. And so since that day, since May the 14th of 1991, I've been growing as a Christian. Now at the beginning, I was like a baby Christian. And so I had to learn things. I know a lot, I still don't know everything. I still don't know everything. You can tell that by my videos. I still don't know everything. I am still learning. I learn every day something that I did not know or something that I've read a hundred times in the Bible will stand out to me at that moment. And that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us understand the Word. We have to have the Holy Spirit. So when we get Jesus, we get the Holy Spirit too. And He gives us discernment and connection with other people that are saved. He connects me with music. But Jesus is my Savior and He saved me. And not only did He save me, He gave me a better life. He gave me a better direction to follow rather than what I had known before. I was at a fork in the road. I could have gone either way. I knew what was over here. I knew so well what was over there. But God wanted more. So he asked me to take the narrow road to follow him. And so I did. And I'm thankful I did. I'm so thankful because things could have ended up so much differently. Is my life perfect? No, it's absolutely not. But you know what? I am content with everything that I have. And I have what I need. And I have a lot of what I want. And I am good with that. I'm good with that because just like we were talking about last night, I am not a citizen of this earth. I am a citizen of heaven, and one day I will leave all these worldly things, all these worldly things, you know, like I have one phone here, I have one phone here, I have a computer here, you know, I have probably a lot more than what some people do, but all this stuff is temporary. It will not go with me when I leave here. It is all going to stay here. And my children are going to have to go through this stuff and, like, find a home for it because I don't really care. <laughs> so I'm not going to be here. So I don't really care. <laughs> and I am trying to get rid of stuff so that <laughs> just in case, just in case, you know, Jesus comes and gets me through an illness or something or an instantaneous death that they don't have a bunch of stuff to go through. I'm trying to get my house in order. God's been talking to me about getting my house in order for like two years. And so I'm finally doing it. I am I am um, doing it. But I think the first house in order that he wanted me to get in order was my heart. He wanted a closer relationship with me. And I was giving him just a teeny tiny bit of myself. And now I'm giving him so much more. And I probably could give him more. Because I still have time that I, I feel like is wasted time. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. God wanted me to share that with you. And I got baptized in, on June the 8th of 1991. I have been a Christian now for 
30 years. I've been a Christian for 30 years. And um, I would not change not one thing about it. If I had to make that decision again, I would make exactly the same decision again. So, you know, it is not hard to ask Jesus into your heart. You don't have to be at a revival. You don't have to be listening to some kind of music that uh, stirs you spiritually. If you doubt that God is real, then pray. Pray that God will reveal himself to you where there is no doubt. I have been listening to videos lately of people that are having encounters with Jesus that are Muslims. They are having encounters with Jesus and they are getting saved. It is amazing. God right now is pouring out his spirit on all generations. The, there are some on fire younger generations out there that you would not believe. They are on fire for Jesus. So I'm going to do just a really short thing instead of giving a whole message on salvation. This, These are the ABCs of salvation. But first, I want to read... Um, wait a minute. I want to read the gospel to you. Then I'm going to read that. Uh... I'm not real sure whether it is first or second Corinthians. Okay, here it is. First Corinthians 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas then of the twelve, that's the twelve apostles, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I skipped a bit. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren, at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not me to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Okay, so that is the gospel of Jesus in a nutshell. And that is Paul talking. And you talk about somebody, a lot of people feel like they are unworthy to be saved. Everyone, we're all unworthy. I was unworthy to be saved. I'm still unworthy. But because of the grace of God, because God sent his son to die for us, we have the offer of salvation. And Paul, Paul used to be called Saul. And Paul's job was to gather up the Christians so they could be killed. He didn't kill them, but he gathered them up. He had the paperwork. 
He went out and gathered them up so they could be killed. But God still used him in such a mighty way. He was in prison a lot, but he was writing these letters of encouragement to the churches. He expanded Christianity in a great way through a lot of his letters. So that is the gospel. And so if you would like to invite Jesus into your heart, you can say your own prayer, but admit that you're a sinner and ask for forgiveness. Well, these are the ABCs of uh, salvation. Believe that Jesus is God's one and only Son that came to save the world through his death, burial, and resurrection. And confess that Jesus, confess Jesus is your Savior and Lord of your life. Invite him into your heart. You know, this is the most important decision of your life. Please do not keep waiting. Please invite Jesus into your heart. And I'm going to just leave it to where you can do that on your own. You can say your own prayer. We're going to leave it open tonight. Okay, so this is Numbers... Uh, 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And we all need some peace. We all need some peace. Now I'm going to pray. My friend Josie is sick. So I'm going to pray for my friend Josie and uh, her friends. And I am going to get off of here so I can go feed my child and have just a little bit of relaxation time. So please have some relaxation time tonight. Um, and um, I'm going to pray for you also. God, we just come before you, God, and we just, we're just so thankful that Jesus did die for us to offer us salvation, God. We just pray, God, that if there is anyone out there that needs Jesus as their Savior, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. God, anyone who watches this, God, I pray for blessings upon them. I pray for your blessings. I can't bless anybody, God, but you can. I pray for your protection. I pray for your provision. I pray that if they're sick, God, that you would heal them either emotionally, physically, or spiritually. God, I pray for their families. I pray for blessings for their families. God, I pray for Josie in Austin. And uh, I just pray for healing for her. She sounded so sick this afternoon, God. I just pray that you would help her to be able to get over this cough and to feel better so she can go to work tomorrow, God, and she won't have to drag herself there sick. We pray for Mr. Mike and the boys, God, that are sick also. We just pray for healing for them. And we just pray, God, we just praise you that Mr. Mike um, has taken these boys in, uh, Jace, uh, Luis. Um, there's some new ones. I can't think of their names. That he has taken these young men in, God. That you would give him guidance and wisdom to pour the love of Jesus into them. The compassion of Jesus. The peace of Jesus, God. That he would be able to meet their needs physically and uh, emotionally, God. And that you would meet their needs spiritually, God. We just praise you and thank you. We pray that you would help us to be bold as we go out and we share the good news of Jesus and as we share your truths God and in Jesus name we pray amen well all right my pray and share warriors our time is up and I went over five minutes I'm gonna have to get better at this but anyway have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow which is Monday uh, much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.